over the last few days there have been a series of of vandalisms um in temples Hindu temples in the Indian states of Andhra Pradesh. There was a case in, in Ramatirtha. Another I think in, in Vitavita and another one near to Rajamundri in East Godavari district. This is not simply some kind of, of recent phenomenon. Um, this kind of thing has been going on for for, for years. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh, which is kind of, which is kind of in on the Bay of Bengal, so kind of on the eastern coast of the peninsula, is the the hotspot of evangelical Christian mission activity in India. Another thing, I don't intend in any way to to express prejudice or hatred against any particular group. Um, I in no way intend for this video to invoke a personal backlash against Christians either abroad or in India. I also don't want this to use this video to espouse any extreme views. And any comments either expressing hatred towards a particular group or, or those that rather than engaging with what I'm saying intellectually simply attack me or refer to me as a Bhakt or a Sanghi or a Modi supporter, which I I am not overtly pro Modi. Any such claim um shall be reported and any such comment will be deleted. Some of you are probably wondering Okay, fine, but why is Christianity so problematic? Why why pick on the Christians? Is it why why Christianity? Um and I'll illustrate that with two examples. So in, in the first example, let's imagine that that there's a household in, in that region. They practice Hindu customs. They visit the local Balaji temple every week. They bring home um, laddus, which is a kind of sweet, as prasadam. They they perform puja at home, and they have a certain set of of, of kind of family traditions and customs, and that binds people together. Now let's imagine one day someone approaches one of the members of the household and they tell them about about Buddhism. They they explain about about the four noble truths, how all of us have to how in order to to over to transcend suffering, one has to develop awareness. Awareness not only of the external world, but also of one's internal world. And with this awareness, one begins to become separate from um, harmful mental dispositions, known in Sanskrit as glaciers. So, th so this member of the household starts learning more and more about Buddhist philosophy, and starts practicing Buddhist practices meditation and they find those things very helpful so they begin to share their experience their experiences with the family the family also takes on board 
many of the same teachings and starts doing um, taking part in Buddhist meditation practices. And the family benefits, but again, this has no impact on the family traditions. Although there are some modern Buddhist movements, kind of some kind of Buddhist movements from the twentieth century, um, which are really are purely really political, that do see themselves as being anti-Hindu, large. By 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 and large, um, Buddhism has never been Buddhism has never had this displacive effect on a person's traditions, um, and Hindu deities are also a large part of of, of Buddhist practices, even far outside of India. Um, but the, if I take the case of Buddhism, Buddhism has a tendency to combine itself with the traditions, the the religious practices of of different cultures, and it doesn't take anything away. And in the example that I gave, um the family would still retain their same practices. The The introduction of Buddhist teachings would not cause any family tension. Now, now let's take a different example. Let's suppose that in this village there's another family and one day the family's daughter finds out about now let's take another example let's suppose that there's also another family and like the first, they also visit the temple every week. They they bring home basadam, they, they take part in puja, they do all of the rituals. Um, and this is what binds the family together. But suppose, let's say, let's say the daughter kind of the daughter takes part in, in these these rituals because that's that's what she she's known these are these are what she has encountered growing up but she doesn't necessarily understand why her family takes part in these rituals or or, or why burning why burning ag agrabati or, or incense around a an image or, or murti? Why that has any effect? Um, but she doesn't really think much about it. Then one day, someone approaches her. He tells her about the gospel, about Jesus. He explains that Jesus is the 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 only way to be saved, and that unless one exclusively accepts Jesus as as a Lord, as 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 one as one one's sole authority, then one is going to spend forever and eternity after one dies intensely suffering. Um, the daughter is, is is almost kind of shocked, um, and she's she's always wondered why do I why do I take part in the, in these rituals why do I um, why do I um, kind of why do I kind of burn incense around my my Balaji Murti? 
And she also finds out that that the her family customs are an act of rebellion against the one true God. And the, these are these are Christian teachings. These these are not kind of fringe fringe ideas that only only kind of a certain minority of, of Christians accept. The, these are the standard essential Christian teachings found throughout the New Testament. Um just in case any in in, in case in case anyone kind of says that I, I'm attacking Christians and fairy or I'm misrepresenting Christians or, or Christians couldn't possibly believe this stuff. This is this is what Chris all Christians are, are supposed to believe. Um so the daughter's taken back and she she's really anxious about what's going to happen to her family so so she 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 comes she returns back home she realizes that she can't take part in her family customs anymore because as far as she she now believes they are evil as as it says various times throughout both testaments of the bible um for example in romans chapter 1 the use of of images or as the bible says idols in in worship is seen as the sign of a rebellious declining society and the bible often associates the use of images in worship with illicit sexual practices so there is that so slowly this this cognitive association forms and the daughter of the household feels really uncomfortable when her family takes part in the practices she can no longer go to the temple with them. She can't any longer participate in the same customs. She can't marry um she can't marry the person of her family's choosing, or she can't marry someone um who would get on with, with the family because the be because whomever she marries also wouldn't because in in christianity um one is not supposed to marry someone from a different religion unless one is already married to them if one is already married to them then then that's okay but if the if one is not then um it's generally forbidden for christians to marry non-christians which means that whomever the daughter marries also cannot engage with the family's traditions. The daughter takes down the 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 murtis, the images or of, of biology or, or her her deva, her deity from her room. Some Chris in some cases, some Christians might associate these things with with evil. In, in in some cases, even evil spirits. And and I do know of cases where Christians have destroyed um, their own personal Hindu images or murtis. Um, I don't know if that's if that's especially common. Um, so for this for this example, I'll just assume that the daughter of the household um, just takes these out of her, of her room and and gives them to her parents. But now you can begin to imagine that this new ideology that is exclusivistic 
that demands exclusive obedience, that says that one's own traditions are, are, are evil. This ideology will create a lot of tension within families and between communities. And don't forget that now the daughter of the household is afraid for her parents. Again, according to the daughter's new religion, because her parents do things wrong, do things wrong, because her parents take part in Hindu customs, in customs in devotion towards other gods, because her parents don't accept the same beliefs as her, then they will also suffer for eternity after they die. And so not only do we have this scenario where one of the the members of the household cannot engage with her family in the same way, cannot engage in the things that united the family, but she's also she also now, through no fault of her own in many ways, has to try to take other to separate other members of her family away from their their own traditions, just like her. And that's why that's why Christianity, as opposed to other ideologies, is so divisive. In Indian epistemology, there's a phrase, where there's smoke, there's fire. In other words, where there's an effect, there is also a cause, or a set of causes. So we have established that Christianity, by its very core teachings, is divisive. And we have also established that in certain parts of the world, in, in this in this the case of this video, in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh, there is immense Christian proliferation. And a lot of and most of this is fairly recent is, is evangelical Christianity. And evangelical Christianity doesn't generally have much of a historical foothold in India, unlike some other Christian um, movements within India. So it, it so this is something that has mushroomed within the last few decades. One also has to to be aware that a lot of these, a lot of Christian groups in this region have a lot of resources and they also operate in villages that generally are not that wealthy. Which makes one wonder why okay why how are these these organizations so well funded or so well resourced if they operate in regions that aren't that are fairly poor and of course evangelical christianity is much more of a western Christian movement. 
um, many of these these Christian organizations operating in the region have in the past received funding or backing from Western Christian groups or churches. Um, now I think it's a bit more tricky to get funding because um, of certain rulings over the last few years. But generally a lot of the funding, the, the resources, have come from the West. And many churches in America, in, in Europe, have what are known as mission partners. These are either local groups or overseas groups who partake in Christian activity, who are supported or funded by these churches. Some of them are really purely altruistic. They're just charity organizations that happen to be Christian. Others are, are much more orientated towards evangelism, which is sometimes referred to by non-Christians as conversion. Um, generally, Christians don't tend to use the term conversion. One would use the term evangelism. Um, and these churches, the, these church congregations, aren't funding overseas groups with necessarily with malicious intentions. Many of them have, many of them find out about the work they fund from the organizations from the overseas organizations themselves and so if 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 one imagines oneself as kind of as a christian in the west one doesn't know much about the nations the, the affected nations. But one hears about how the these Christian groups are, are doing great things. They're uplifting communities, they're building hospitals, schools, buildings, things, planting new churches. W one naturally thinks that by giving money to these groups, one is benefiting, one is enhancing overseas communities and also spreading the love of Jesus as a bonus because that's what Western Christians hear and sometimes people in these communities do clash with Christian groups and when that happens one hears that these, these Christian groups are being persecuted and there are genuine cases where Christians in India have faced violence, um, like in parts of Odisha, the state north of Andhra Pradesh. But I think in the case of Andhra Pradesh, the, the, the assertion that Christians here are persecuted is should be taken with some scepticism because firstly the, the Andhra Pradesh now has a Christian government as in a gov a, a, the, the chief minister is an evangelical Christian and there are concerns that he might be partial towards Christians in that region and also because of the way in which the Christian narrative operates. And as I've mentioned, Christianity is naturally antagonistic. C 
Christians are much more attentive towards any kind of backlash or negative response. And the Bible teaches that Christians n normally should be persecuted and and that if one is as a Christian is not being persecuted, then one is not following Christianity correctly. And so many Christians, and I don't mean this in, in a sense of gaslight, by gaslight I mean denying or invalidating a person's own personal a person's own account of their own experiences. Um, but Christians largely are fairly attentive to any kind of negative response and we'll, we'll often interpret that as persecution because that is consistent with biblical teaching um, and I've encountered that a lot in my own personal experience. And so there is always this danger that accounts of of persecution are going to be exaggerated. To summarize, Christianity in comparison to other ideologies is a problem is a problematic religion. Um, secondly, in parts of the world, so in in this particular video, I'm highlighting the example of Andhra Pradesh in India. But in in certain regions, there is a lot of Christian activity. This activity can harm communities. It can divide people. Um, it can divide families because now people have to live mutually incompatible lives or lifestyles. And a lot of this is funded from overseas. From overseas. Be and the people who fund this often believe that they're, help they're helping. But as I've explained and as has become evident, th they, they are not. So my request is if you are a Hindu or if you have some kind of Kind of, kind of connection to Hindu culture. Maybe you're a Buddhist or a, or a Jain or a Sikh. If, if you have some connection to Hindu culture, um, one, it's important to be aware of these issues. Um, many Hindus do not really understand Christianity especially well, mainly because Christianity is radically different from Hindu worldviews. And often Hindus tend to fall into two camps, either the, the denialism camp, so, deni so justifying Christian beliefs, um, even denying Christian beliefs, so den denying the more problematic Christian beliefs that even Christians themselves would openly admit. So and the other the other camp, the other extreme, is Hindus who are very averse to Christianity but don't perhaps understand the nuances or the theology in depth or the the, the variation within Christianity. And so a lot of Hindus who are very critical of Christianity don't have very strong or robust criticisms. So if you're a Hindu 
please please do some research of Christianity um, about the politics of Christianity in India, about the the history of of Christianity within European colonialism, Christian theology, and also make other people well. Perhaps write to churches if you, if you know of any Christian groups that fund this activity. Just make them aware that some of what they're doing is actually causing harm overseas. And the, the narratives they may be told often are not entirely true. And if you are a Christian watching this, um, especially if you're an evangelical Christian, please... Please be aware that some of what you're funding, or you might not be directly funding it, but some of what groups you are possibly connected to are funding is damaging overseas communities. Um, and that mission work actually does cause a lot of harm. Be aware that the narratives you you are told, whether that's by groups like Gospel for Asia, which has been denounced by Gospel for Asia has actually been denounced by various Christian groups now. But whether that's perhaps Open Doors, be aware that the narratives you are told often are not entirely accurate. Um, and, and please be very careful about which groups you're funding. 